Hi all, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying this Ayu imitating baitfish. Um, it's an excellent fly for smallmouth bass, uh, here in Japan anyway, and, but I'm sure it will work other places. And it would certainly work in the salt water, I think, for a lot of species as well. Um, but I use it a lot here, and catch plenty of fish on them. I also tie them quite small, then just a couple of inches. Um, you know, they work well at different times of the year. Um, and if you watched uh, the recent video I did of, uh, I think it's Maruta fishing, there's a smallmouth bass that I caught as well in that, and the fly that was in the vise is actually the fly that I caught the, the fish on. Um, I'm just sort of restocking my box at the moment, and obviously I'll tie a couple up for the giveaway. As always, I'm putting my materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the members on the content, and be eligible for the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. That's all appreciated. Next, I've got my hook in my vise, and this is a 3.0 Partridge Universal Predator X. Um, I mean, I'll go right down to a 2. Uh, maybe a 3.0, a size 1.0, and uh, a size 2 would be the, th the kind of three main ranges. So, this is going to give me like 5 inches. Maybe something in the three and a half, and then something about two, and that's you know you're covered for the whole the whole year's bait fish basically. So I've got my thread now at the back. This is GSP one hundred, and I've come back to the start of the bend, which is on this hook slightly behind the behind the barb. We've got some bucktail, and you don't need a ton. Um, maybe a wee bit more than if you were tying like a conventional bucktail deceiver or hollow fly, simply because I'm only putting in three stages at right, a tail, one about the middle, and one at the nose. Um, so maybe slightly heavier than you would for a, an ordinary bucktail deceiver with, or with several uh, ties. So we'll get that in, I'm just force the bucktail around the shank, take two loose wraps and tighten on it. See how you're sitting. You should have complete coverage. And you can just tighten up. Just spiral your thread forward. And then you can still sort of manipulate things and make sure that the fibres are sitting on the side of the hook that they should be. I'm going to come back with some really tight wraps here. Really biting in over these waist pieces. Getting that all nicely secured. And now I need some flashy dubbing. Right, I'm using, this is a Sibai uh, Spectra dub. It's quite a soft flashy dubbing. And this is a, this is a UV pearl, this colour, sort of bluey, purpley pearl. You can use the plain pearl if you like, it works fine. I'm going to get my dubbing on the thread and come to just behind the halfway point, right? The, the halfway point's got to be my tie-in, so you need the dubbing to slot, stop before the halfway point so that you're tying on shank, not only the dubbing. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They go right to the halfway. When they're, when they're tying that flies in stages, if there's an under material, they often use that right up to the right up onto the halfway point, which it should actually be left bare. Um or onto the, the point of the next tie in, depending on the fly, obviously. And that's how you end up rushing your head. So I've got a bit more wet glue on there, and I'm going to dub backwards. And I'm just going to let this fill up that space and then come back over. Just keep it, just tighten it as you go if you need to. Build a good amount. 
something like that. You can actually add a wee bit more, and I would rather be a bit short um, than have gone too far. So I'm going to take another bit of white bucktail Maybe the same amount and I'm going to come back If I look at my tail I want the tips of this tie to come to the sort of start of the taper where the ends start tapering out. Just the same as before, a couple of loose wraps, just force it around. You're looking for even distribution or close to it. Hold it tight and get some wraps in there, just lock that in. I mean, you can see I'm moving that hook. Those wraps are well locked in. You know, it's really tight. We trim the waist. So the length of the body. Take my thread back a bit. So that you'll see the dubbing will start to suddenly push there you go it will sort of sli slightly push and lift the bucktail and that's what's got to give you that sort of teardrop shape um, once you've wet the fly so I'm going to start adding like, the colour uh, and the flash you can tie this with less flash if you like uh, depends where you're fishing I'm going fishing tomorrow and where I'm using this I will we'll probably be using this, the fish like quite a bit of flash. I also tie it with a lot less flash for some other rivers. So I've got some, this is fluorescent yellow ripple ice fibre. I'm just tying that on the top. Just separate it. I'm just going to fold back the waist, or the, the tag ends. And that sort of gives you that wee bit of dense colour. which sort of represents an eye quite well. They've got a wee yellow spot and then it kind of goes to a sort of stripey fade. Belly flash, I'm using also ripple ice fibre and I'm using the mineral mix. It's a sort of bluey, pearly colour. Again, a fair amount. Tie it in so that the longest bits are coming back to the end of that tie a bucktail. Make sure it's spread around the bottom of the fly, giving you that belly, fold back the waist. Gives you a nice bit of flash. And then, same as before, just really crank down on that bucktail, tidy everything up. Grab some more of this dubbing. And I'm going to leave myself a good bit of space here. I've got two eye lengths clear, right? To tie in my bucktail and my flash at the front. Glue again. See, you can always add more. I've got to just wrap it back. I don't need more. Which is fine. You 
could probably skip this dubbing, but um, I like to brush it into the brush it into the bucktail with the Velcro. Do or don't, it's up to you. Uh, it just pulls a wee bit more flash into the fly. Looks quite good. Again, if you're if you're fishing somewhere where the flash isn't such a good choice, you might just go bare thread. Entirely your choice. It's your fly. So I'm going to come in now and get my belly. And it's just a bit more white bucktail. And I'm taking I'm trying to get hair from quite high up in the tail, up near the tip. I don't want I don't want a lot of flare and a lot of buoyancy in the in the hair that I'm using for this fly. Check out your length, come to about there. So again I'm just at the start of the taper of the previous bucktail tie in. Catch that on the bottom. Couple of loose wraps and I'm just gonna put my thumb here and then pull tight. And that should keep most, if not all, of the bucktail on the underside of the shank. That is trying to creep on me a wee bit, but that's not a problem of that secured. And I can let it come all the way around like the bottom half. Right, you can still see the shank in there, it's clear, but it's certainly in that sort of halfway around. Right, you mean the the line of the bucktails there, right along the shank length, which is ideal. Come away my waist. So it's at the weight. And then I'll get some electric ripple ice fibre. So this is not flashy, it's just really bright fluorescent yellow. Just gives you that wee hot accent in the middle of the fly. And I'm going to make this again shorter than I want it to be shorter than this tie in. Um, if you tie it too long on top here, it's just going to wrap and the same will go for the bucktail. So I want to come in, it's just beyond the back of the hook really. Catch that in, two or three wraps. Fold it over. Just tidy up. It's looking good. You can, sometimes I like to come in with my brush, the wire brush, and just sort of separate the fibre, see how it wants to spread. Uh, and then I'm going to take some olive bucktail for the back, and I don't mind coming further down the tail for this. Uh, I've not put a kilo in this fly. Um, sometimes I kill them. There's more material on the top, and the hook's quite heavy anyway, so you get away with it, a keel. Um, and I'd rather have like the lighter fly on the sinking line, or the intermediate line, than a heavy, a heavily weighted fly in this pattern anyway. Um, but sometimes a is good if, if, if you're fishing faster water, or you want it to sink a wee bit quicker, a couple of wraps of lead on the bend. It's ideal, but most of the time you don't want it, I think. Some people might disagree with me on that one, but... All the bucktail, a good a good bunch, there's more here than there was in the belly. Right, this is probably the same as the amount I was tying in for the tail in the middle. Uh, not too long, again, if you go much longer than than this, right? You'll end up with all of tail wrapping around the hook. So we'll just get that in nice and tight. See how you're sitting. Get your thumbnail. Make sure 
you're all the way around the hook. And that's fine. Take another few lap wraps just to consolidate that. And come in close. Cut away that waste. tidy everything up. So we'll come to the front and tie back into that waist ends. Getting it all locked in. That's not bad, that's my head length that I set as well. Bit more flash on the belly. I don't know, there's 20 strands there maybe. Of the Minnow mix, rip of lace. Just tie it in, fold it back. I mean, some of it will break and all that when you fish it. Um, the flash is what the fly sort of seems to lose as it gets beat up. But to be quite honest, um, I mean, it depends where you're fishing these, but I'm fishing these like, around like bridges and dams and there's a lot of concrete and rocks and usually I end up resharpening the hook point and all that after banging it off a rock. The fly will, tied like this with the super glue and the GSP, the fly will generally outlast the hook. Um, and I think that's true. It don't doesn't matter what brand of hook you're using. I've tried a lot of hooks, and it's just the way it is, you know. Um, actually, I want a wee bit more of that olive nipple ice. Just to darken that back a wee bit more. Fold it back, and you can see there the wee shorter ends. Well, I hope you can see it sort of darken the head, and then you've got the darkness coming across the back, which is quite common among a lot of bait fish. Um, I mean, you might see I'm overthinking it. I'm just trying to get that colour scheme that pleases me. Right, this is the thing, I like it to look good so that I'm confident fishing it. Now, we get a wee bit of glue on there. Just take a few wraps. And you could stop here, right, this, this will catch fish, no question. But I just like a wee eye. And I'm using quarter inch tab eyes. Um, I like the tab eye because you can position it so the eyes back in the body, but you don't need to deform the shape of the fly. Right, this is tied quite round. Right, it's no, it's no. I mean, because I've only got a couple of stages, it's not really fat, but it's also not tied high and thin. Right, I've tied it more or less in the round. Um, and I don't want to crush that with, uh, by gluing eyes on. So all I do, I get my tab eye, stick it in so that the, there's a wee bit of the tab there, coming back. Just check the length. Take a wrap of thread. Just make sure it's sitting how you like. And then you can you can squeeze this in to check the check the position because although they're, they're adhesive backed, um, but as soon as you fish it, they they just stop sticking to the bucktail anyway, and it'll take on its round shape. 
to make sure that the eyes don't fall out or pull out, I like to roll back with my thumbnail the end of the tab, right, just as you would a f any other synthetic or flash. Get it on your side as well. And tie over, tie it back, and that locks it in. Right? The eye would then have to break. The plastic has to snap or be cut, it can't slide out. More glue. Right, glue's your friend. Build your wee nose. And then you can whip finish. There you go, plenty. The last thing I like to do is just take a, a pen, it could be dark olive or black, and just I come over the top half of the nose. This pen's just about dead. It'll bleed anyway when I put the varnish on it. I just like, you don't need to do that at all, I just like to take that wee, um, so, uh, the brightness off the back of the nose and it sort of blends quite nice with the, the coloration of the fly anyway. And you'll see there, once you, you'll see it happening when you tie your own, once you put the, your varnish or your super glue or whatever on, that'll sort of soften and melt into the top of the head, keeping the tone. So there you go, all you need to do is run it under a cold tap and hack and let it dry and you'll get that lovely bait fish shape, a real fish catcher. Um, if you're not talking about it and explaining it, it's quite a quick tie as well. Like you'll tie them up in, you know, ten minutes. Uh, and how many you got to put in your box? Probably you don't need to carry that many of them. Stout tip it, you don't lose them. So there you go. That's my IU deceiver, we'll call it. It's, uh, it's a good, good wee pattern. So, hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take a guys. Bye.